ambition, sinful desire. We still talk the way we want to talk. We still act the way we want to act. Go out the way we want to go out. We act in ways that don't honor him. We live our lives. We work our jobs the way that don't honor him. We run our businesses the way that don't honor God. And yet we wonder, we wonder why. Jesus says, if you would just live a little later. Are you with me today? His plan is not for you to die for him, but to live for him. And somebody says, if you lose your life, you save your life. But if you save your life, you lose your life. What is Jesus saying that if I lose my life? In other words, if my life, at the sum total of my life, at the end of my life, everything I have done is based on my choices. Think about this. What do you remember disciples for in the Bible? For the choices they made. Peter, we remember him for denying Jesus because of the choice he made. Thomas, we remember him for doubting Jesus after his resurrection. You remember people for the choices and the actions they made. When Jesus says that you would lay down your life, or he says if you would lose your life, what he's saying is if you would abandon your ability to make choices. That might not settle in yet because some of you are not interested in God making choices in your life. What you desire is more important and how you feel is more important and what you desire is more important and what you want to do is more important. But Jesus says, what good is it if you gain the whole world by doing your life the way you want and lose your soul? Because when we choose ourselves, our own path, we lose our souls. Are you with me today? Although Jesus died for you, he's asking you to live for him. This is an invitation to live, not to die. We look at saying, well, how do I give my life to God? How do I save or lose my life? What do I do? By following God's plan for your life. What is God's plan? If you don't know God's specific plan, read his word for the general plan that God has for you. You know what's really not normal? Christians who serve God and don't obey him. That's not normal. Oh, yeah, it's not normal. That we serve this big, huge God. We sing songs to him on Sundays. We're so excited about everything he's done in our lives. And yet we don't obey him yet. We don't listen to the unction of the Holy Spirit. And yet we hate people. And yet we dislike people. And yet we gossip. And yet we sleep around. And yet we're sinning. And yet we talk about grace as if it's a shower to clean ourselves. And you don't obey God. Grace is an invitation to obey God's word. I wish you understand that life... Is about choices. And what God's asking the believer to do is abandon your ability to choose. Our God wants all of you. Our God is an all-consuming God. The Bible says in an all-consuming fire. God don't just want you on Sundays. God doesn't want a partiality of your life. He wants all of your life, even the hurt. Even the pain God wants. God wants the hate you have for others. He says, if you would give me your burdens, take my burden. It's much lighter. You don't have to hate nobody. You don't have to dislike people. God says, I can take care of that for you. I can take care of that for you. Jesus said, greater love, John 15, 15, has no man than he would lay down his life for his friends. The Bible also says that you are friends of God. The invitation of Christ is not to have a great life and everything. The invitation of Christ at the basis of everything is for you to allow God to choose for you. You're a friend of God and while we may have heard that before and maybe it doesn't really impact us the way it should. Being a friend of God means that if we are to display the greatest love for God, which involves laying down our will, our desire, our choices. It is not normal for you as a believer to live in sin the entire existence of your Christianity. If there is no maturity coming up in you, there is a problem. If there's no growth in your spirit, every healthy thing grows. If you are struggling with the same sin you walked into this church with, I'm coming up your street right now to let you know that you are outside of God's will and maybe you're here on Sunday, but yet all throughout the week choices are being made that are keeping you from God's plan for your life. 
Maybe you wouldn't ask God as much, what's wrong with myself? Why is my life not the way I want it to be? Maybe you would have the husband you want, the wife you need. Maybe you would have the stuff that you would want and need if you would follow God's choices for your life and stop putting your hands in the way. As a songwriter, Jason Upton said, he said, it's hard for God to work with my hands in the way. It's hard for God to work if I always have a plan. If I'm always going out searching, how can God bring me a woman, bring me a man? How can God bring me what I need in my financial life if I can't run my life by God's choices for my finances? If I can't do what God desires, but yet I am a Christian, yet I go to church, and yet I have all types of issues with people. I am a Christian, I serve God, I still gossip though, I still have all types of issues, and there's no choice to mature after God. There's no choice to go after God's heart. Laying down our right to choose, it's not easy. It's difficult. I know firsthand laying down my life to choose for God's plan. In this walk as a pastor, I've lost my right to choose. I can't choose who I love or who I care about. I have to love all. I have to care about all. I have to receive all. I have to forgive all. I've come to a place in my Christian walk. Sincerely, I don't have the choice to hate you. I was talking to some friends the other day and we were talking about that. As a leader in the church, I don't have the right to have a bad feeling towards you or anybody. I don't have the right to have negative vibe towards anybody. I'm a follower of Christ and he said to love. I'll preach to you, Cheryl. Thank you. God desires for you to forgive, for you to love, For you to be blessed. For you to have a good, godly life. I'm I'm really trying to drive this home. I don't have the right to hold the grudge. I gave that choice up to the point where someone who's really hurt me will call. And I've had some people, listen, in this walk, folks will come in. Folks will go out. It's like water off my back. I thank God for what he's brought me. I thank God for the time I spent with folks. But I can sow into somebody 10 years and they'll walk out my life. And it's just like that. That's the way church goes sometimes. I don't have a choice to hate people for abandoning me. I don't have a choice. I don't have that ability in me. All I can do is be like, man, I love you. God bless you. When they come back, hug them and say, hey, it's so good to see you. I'm not going to say, where you been? Hmm. Now your life's a mess. Told you. That's not, that's not, listen, that's not the pastor who God made me to be. I want to be a shepherd after his heart. Because the book of Isaiah declares that shepherds who are not after God's heart, he will strike their flock and people will scatter in the end. I don't want to raise up a bunch of abused lambs. I want to raise up people who know God's heart, who are able to be uh, uh, just examples of what God desires of your life. I want you to really think about this. Is your life normal according to scripture? You are a friend of God. Is your life normal? Are you hating people or harboring ill feelings towards people when you as a Christian don't have the right? We were in my small group one day at my city link. Mine's is the best, of course. And and we were there. Amen. We had we had like. 16 adults at my city link this uh, this past week 16 and like and like tanya and aj bought 44 kids in one car and um and we were there a couple of weeks ago and there's this girl from one of our sister churches uh greater bridgeport church and uh pastor mike hawkins and this girl named laura young and she's the girl that she dances at the gathering of the tribes if you were there she was the one just dancing out there and we asked her why she dances and she goes jesus asked me to dance with him so i danced with him she used to come to our prayer nights and she'd just be dancing all over the place, just dancing. Just, just dancing. And one day she said in our link, and something that really just stuck to my heart resonated, she said this, and it really touched my heart. And I want to I wanna speak this over you guys, honestly, with all my heart. Because the problem is that many Christians, she said this, we were talking about gossiping, we were talking about people who've hurt you. And she said, how can you put up a wall designed to keep people made in the image of God out And expect to get God in. She said when you put up a wall. To keep the people who are in the image of God out. The actual image can't get in either. 
I realized she put it into the perfect context, but I realized this years ago that as a, as a, as a pastor, I don't have the right folks who call me who have done stab me in the back, hurt me, and they'll act like nothing happened, and so will I. You ever had that person? That dude, he just called me like, we cool. <laughs> well, I was cool with him. Called me up, hey, how you doing? I'm doing great, how you doing? We just shoot the breeze, and you know what? I showed him the love of Christ. Because as a pastor, I don't have the choice to hate these people. I don't have the choice to be hurt by people. My pastor, Pastor Philip, the one who was here last week with his British accent, he says, you know, being offended is a choice. You choose it. You choose it. But as a pastor, I've lost the right to live my life my way. Normal Christianity should be that as followers of Christ, we actually do what Christ did, we actually love like Christ did and forgive like Christ did. For even as he was being crucified, folks driving nails in his hands, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. But many times we get hurt and we, and we get into a situation maybe with somebody in your life and, and you'll harbor that for years or maybe you're making other choices outside of God's will. Maybe you're still addicted to things that God don't want you doing. Maybe you just still don't seek God the way you should seek God. But yet we're Christians after God's heart, but don't have God's heart in our sights. A lay down lifestyle is what it's called. Laying down my will. Laying down my choice. Not every Sunday do I want to be here. Not every Sunday do I want to serve God. Not every Monday am I happy about God. But I've laid down my choice. And so I follow after him with all of my heart. Because he desires me. He cried out to his father, dad, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. We all believe God has a plan for our lives, but often we still live as we desire and choose our, I believe God has a plan for me. Man, brother, I believe God had a destiny, a plan for me, but yet we live how we desire. What foolishness is this that we believe in a higher plan, but live a low life? What good is it we believe in a higher call, but yet all we beckon to is the call of temptation and sinful desires. We still talk the way we want to talk. We still act the way we want to act. Go out the way we want to go out. We act in ways that don't honor him. We live our lives. We work at our jobs in ways that don't honor him. We run our businesses in ways that don't honor God. And yet we wonder, we wonder why. And Jesus says, if you would just live a laid down life. A life where I am the choice you make. A life where I am what you desire. A life where what you desire takes the backstage. You know, when God's will is first, you take the backstage. You let him. See, see, when God's will is first, you understand this life is not about you. It's so funny that I find it really funny. It's like a rat race. As, As people... We live our lives trying to accomplish so much. And hey, I'm all about accomplishments. I love, I'm a highly motivated person. I like doing things. I like building stuff. I like getting stuff done. I love coming here on Sunday mornings and doing all this stuff. I was telling some folks this week, if I could just be a sound guy, I'd be happy to be a sound. I don't need to be a pastor. I love doing this kind of stuff. But I have to surrender my will to God. I need to make sure the show is about God. You are just a blip on the radar of humanity. You are a blip in the radar of humanity. I heard, a, I heard it put like this. Imagine, imagine that you were an extra in a movie. An extra in a movie. Maybe, maybe Lord of the Rings and you told all your friends, oh my God, I'm starring in this movie. I am in, Megan, I am in Lord of the Rings. Part three, Return of the King. I, oh my God, you got to come see this movie. And all your family comes out and all your friends come out. And you've got like 50 people at one theater, 20 at another. And they're all telling their friends, like, oh my God, Pastor Lewis is in this movie. It's going to be great. And then, and then there's a fight scene at the end. And a guy runs across the street. There I am. There I am. There, saw me. Saw me. Saw me. It's funny. And that's how we are. Thinking this life is all about us. Wanting people to see us, accept us, look at us. But this life's about Jesus. This life's about God. This life's about God's desire for your life. This existence that we have is solely based on what God has 
for you? Are you living a laid down life? Are you surrendering to God? Have you given God everything? When you see people free from oppression, free from all these things, free from unforgiveness, I'm free from unforgiveness. It's a great feeling. I, I say that with all my heart, not to brag. I'm free from unforgiveness. I love, I genuinely have a deep love for people. How many of you believe that God's will is for you to forgive? Amen. At some point, you have to realize that your belief has to graduate into behavior. How many of you believe that God wants you to live a pure life? At what point does belief enter into behavior? How many of you believe that God desires to c- communicate with you through prayer? Nobody wants to say amen. I don't know about that, Pastor. <laughs> Belief has to turn into behavior, reading God's word. Belief turned into behavior, helping the poor. Belief has to turn into behavior, speaking life into others. Belief has to turn into behavior. A laid down life graduates into behavior. Don't spend your life waiting on God to make a move. He's waiting for you to make a choice. A real choice to live that laid down life. A life where you deny yourself the right to speak bad or or deny yourself the right to live a life outside of God's will. God desires a laid down life. A laid down life is where he is first and how he feels matters first. What good is it to have a king that we don't serve? When will beliefs transform into behavior when we choose to lay down the right of choice? He said, if you would lose your life, lose your own ability to choose, you'll save your life because then I, God, will show you in my word the proper choices to make. And when I show you the proper choices to make, it'll lead you into success. Maybe some of that sounds tough as you guys might know and definitely it's not usual or normal. Maybe me talking about praying is not normal for you or reading your word is not normal. Maybe you volunteering at the Bridgeport Rescue Mission or the Prospect House is not normal for you, but yet Jesus said that what you would do for the least of my brothers, you are doing it unto me. It's normal according to scripture. Maybe your life's too busy and you don't have time and you don't got this and your family this. I get all that, but yet the Bible still says truth unapplied is still truth. Driving by the hurting, the broken, the wayward, the homeless. We don't have the right to do it because we're followers of Jesus Christ. I don't have the right to abandon God's desires. When I lay down my choice, God gives me his. When I lay down my will, I find his will. When I lay down my negativity, I find his positive energy that flows through me. Joy, unspeakable. I woke up today at five in the morning for the last couple of weeks. I've been waking up at five just like another day. Excited about God, excited about life because I've laid down my life for his will and he's given me his instead. His word makes choices that are in line with my life. And I run my life by the measuring stick of the word of God. God's made choices for us in his word. Here's the heart of living a laid down life. Here's the crux of the matter. A laid down life is characterized by choosing God's reaction in adverse situations rather than choosing what you would normally do. When a problem arises and you usually act in a way that's outside of God's will. When problems arise, it is the opportunity for the believer to be like Christ. It is the opportunity of the believer to chase after God's heart. It is the opportunity of the believer to do God's will. And often we fail the test. A normal Christian life involves us as believers wholeheartedly following God's will. Even in moments of difficulty and trial. The disciples followed him and changed the world by doing what he taught and what he did. I would challenge you that more times than not, our lives really reflect us surrendering to God. But yet this type of surrender that we are called to is what I refer to as entry-level Christianity. Maybe some of you are tired of hearing of what you might have to do for God. Maybe some of us are so obsessed with what God can do for us. Show me a deep-seated theory in the Bible of what God can do for me. The deepest thing I can show you as a pastor is how to seek God for your own life. 
how to read the word for your own revelation, how to seek God and receive from the Lord on your own. Having a life after God. First John 2, 6 is one of those scriptures that can get you in trouble. First John 2, 6, whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. If you claim to be a Christian, you must live as Jesus did. And although society says it's not normal, if it's not normal, I'd rather be retarded. I'd rather be looked at as crazy, but following God's will. I'd rather be looked at as just a nutcase, but following God's will. This is a different kind of life that we're called To live as a follower of Christ, my duty is to obey him and to model my life after him, not when it's convenient, but at every moment of my life. Christianity is not for the ones who love convenience. It's for the ones who are after God's heart. Look at Jesus. Jesus, all throughout scripture, when he was questioned about what he was doing, what would he say? He would say, I'm only doing what my father has called me to do. I'm only doing what the Father, Jesus had submitted his life. I'm only doing what the Father desires of me. I'm not going to do what I want because if it was up to Jesus, he said, pass this cup for me. I don't want to die for these fools. Maybe he ain't say fools. That was just my 2013 version. But he's like, I don't want to die. Not my will. Your will. Not my will. Your will. First Corinthians 11, 1, be imitators of Christ. Paul declares that as an imitator, we must imitate Jesus. I know it's not popular to allow God to shape and mold your life these days, but yet we have to mold our lives according to the word of God. The world says, be you. The Bible says, be Christ. The world says, just do it. The Bible says, do what Jesus would do. The world calls out for us to live free and be what we want. But the truth is that real freedom is surrendering in God. Real freedom is surrendering to God's will. Normal to the world is expressing yourself and doing what you want, when you want, and keeping it real no matter what. I'm just saying, right? We just do what we want, say how we want. But that's not normal according to the word of God. As a matter of fact, it says, let our words be few. My God, I wish you would realize that a life after Christ is not characterized by short tempers, filthy mouths, ruckus lifestyles, but yet it is characterized by what Jesus desires, love, peace, forbearance, gentleness, and a heart to do the will of the Father. Does your version of normal match up with Jesus? Maybe you're sitting here and you don't want to hear some of what I'm saying. It's probably because it goes against the grain of your life. And I would tell you that what you call normal is not normal. You make excuses for how far you are from God's desires. And we say stuff like, I'm not where I used to be. It doesn't mean you are where you need to be either. It means that you have to press harder, push further, and get deeper into God's presence. Maybe you not have everything you want in life, but you got what you need right now. And what you really need is to do God's will for your life. Life is too short. Life is so short. I often use the analogy that if I gave you a dollar for every hour you would live on this life, on average, you would not even be a millionaire. As a matter of fact, you would have to be over 100 years old to even break near a million dollars. Life is short. Life is precious. The world says, do what you want. The Bible says, do as God desires. My thought concerning complete surrender to God and living the normal Christian life is his followers. Is his followers, rather. When I surrender and lay down my life, as Jesus stated, lose my life by placing it in his hands and making decisions for God and choosing God's will over my life instead of mine own. When I do this, when I choose God's will, understand this, when I choose God's will for my, when I choose the way of Christ, when I choose the will of God, when I choose what God would desire, I fulfill the original intention of my creation. I fulfill the original intention. What does that mean? That when God desired to make me for a specific reason, when I walk his will, I fulfill that. 
I fulfill that. Back in the old building we had, we went and our computers and our sound booth, we went and, and got Mac. And what we failed to realize was that one of the programs we had for the, the visual program that holds up all the visuals, uh, what we failed to realize was that that program was not compatible with Mac. It was an inferior program, of course. And so we had to get another program that would allow you to run programs for programs that weren't for that computer, if that makes sense. And the program that we ran was called Crossover. And this program allowed us to run Easy Worship, but yet it had a bunch of bugs in it and a bunch of malfunctions. It had a bunch of things wrong with it. A lot of stuff you couldn't do. A lot of things that just limited you. Pastor, what are you saying? I'm saying that when you live outside of God's purpose for your life, you are limited. You are limited. You are limited when you are doing things that are outside of God's desire for your life. What did God make you for? Did God make you to do what we're doing to live as we please? That's not why God made us. God made us for his glory. God made us for the joy that was set before him. God made us for his pleasure that we would follow after his heart. A laid down life is what Jesus required. He said, if you hold my teaching, you are my disciples then you would know the truth and the truth will set you free. A laid down life is a norm that Jesus required. I know maybe for years you've served God with your own perspective and still chasing things that you want or maybe just having feelings towards people opposite of God's will for your life. And I came to challenge you today to redefine what normal as a Christian is. To walk for Christ. What is normal? Normal is surrendering. Normal is loving all. Normal is forgiving all. Normal is doing what God desired, walking out a life of worship. Normal is being a light for Christ. Normal is fulfilling the works of the kingdom of God. That is normal. Seeing miracles, signs and wonders, that's normal. Seeing people get saved by the thousands, that's normal. What we see today in church, not normal. It's not what God desired. Seeing the sick heal was normal. Seeing God move was normal. Seeing miracles was normal because they lived a surrender life. Purposed after God. It's time you redefine normal in your Christian walk with God. When we decide to walk as Jesus desires, it releases us from the burden of lives. Walking for Jesus, the burden of unforgiveness comes off. Living a life of surrender, you might be angry now, but when you live a life of surrender, you you have healing in your life. Living this laid down life and making normal what God desires empowers you to stand against what society says is normal. And, and, And if you're married today, your marriage will last if you're living for God. Your marriage will not fail. You will not be a statistic. It will prevail because the norm in Jesus Christ is freedom and success. Living a life that is laid down for God allows yourself to be molded by God's decisions for your life and releases God to use you in great ways. At this point, I have to, we have to realize that being radical for Jesus should be regular for us. It's time that being radical became regular. It's not time to fall away from God. It's time to run to him. It's time to seek him with all of your heart. We don't have to settle for less than God's best in your life. You don't have to uh, uh, settle for the things of this world. As I live my life in him, my passion flourishes for God. I love him more. I, I, I was woke up this morning. I woke up so daggone early. I went for a drive this morning. Pulled out my house at 6 o'clock. I drove around my neighborhood just blaring Christian music. And I couldn't stop smiling. And at some point at a stop, I said, man, God, I just love you so much. You've given me so much joy. And I have no reason to be joyful. I have bleak situations all across the landscape of my life. I have horrible things all around me. But yet, I woke up with unspeakable joy, full of glory. Because God is just doing a new thing in my life. And I'm surrendered to him. And I, I was just at a stop sign. I must have looked like an idiot in my car. Just, <laughs> I'm just happy. I was bagging my, just like wagging my head like a dog with a tail. I was just loving God this morning. Because loving God is becoming the new normal for me with all of my heart. And with all 
of my heart. As I live for him, everything I go through becomes worth it. Because how can I accept the good from God and and not endure sufferings with Christ? By the world standards, normal is sometimes not awesome or great. It's average, medium. It's not inspiring Yet the life of Jesus was normal and it was all inspiring. It was fantastic. It was great. Isn't that the life you desire to live? That's the life the early church lived, seeing God move in their lives. The disciples were bold and full of faith. Scriptures tell stories of great miracles and revivals that they saw. Our normal fails to bring even an ounce of God's spirit. Sometimes we pray over the sick for long times, but yet because the Majority of our life is not normal. God can't move in us. It's time to redefine your normal. My norm as a believer should bring change to the lives of others. Every day I wake up, I should be motivated to bring change, to be happy, to tell people about what God is doing in my life. As a follower of Christ, radical needs to become regular. What does that look like, pastor? It looks like you're being a prayer warrior It looks like you seeking God with all your heart. It looks like you're giving God your best. It looks like you're giving God everything that is worthy of. Because sometimes what we say God is worthy of, we don't even give him the bare minimum. What is normal for you? Is a normal day with you, does it consist of you forgetting about God? Because I would challenge you, church, that's not normal. What's God's real desire for us? Recently, many of you, you met one of my lifelong friends, Pastor P. How many of you enjoyed Pastor P last week? Amen. If you didn't, there's definitely something wrong with your spirit. And he's my spiritual father. So if you didn't like him, maybe you don't belong here. I'm just saying, that's the man right there. Pastor P is so awesome. Something about Pastor P, he's just always so positive. I saw him going through hell. I saw Pastor P going through some really bad things in life and yet... You can ask anyone who knows him, he's always got a smile on his face. Went through some of the toughest things life can throw at you. And I won't go into his story because it's not my business to tell his story. It's not my place, but yet he's a great man of God. One thing about Pastor P I love is is the way he talks. (laughs) Last week he was here. It's just so awesome to see you guys. I'm so happy to be in Bridgeport, Connecticut with Pastor Felipe and his church. And he has this great British accent. And the thing about Pastor P's accent is when he speaks, it identifies where he's from. Kind of narrows it down. Maybe South Africa, Australia, England. One of the three places he can become from. To Pastor P, the way he talks is normal. To us, it's not normal. Where he's from, having a heavy British accent is normal. But where he comes to, it's not normal. You know what wouldn't be normal? It wouldn't be normal if one day I went to go meet Pastor P and he had a deep southern accent. He had a southern Louisiana drawl. And he says to me, I changed the way I talk to adapt to the people around me. Because everyone kept on looking at me like I wasn't normal. Then he would blend in and totally not stick out. And in my eyes, he would lose half the reason I love him because of the way he talks. Something about the way I just listen more when people have an accent. Not Spanish accent, I listen less. It's just the English accents. Pastor P has been in America for close to 16, 17 years. And he's not lost his accent. 16 or 17 years, he's not been influenced by the people around him to lose his accent. Pastor, what are you saying? I'm saying, as followers of Christ, we shouldn't lose our accent. There should be something in the way you talk, in the way you live your life, in the way you act that says, I am different. I am of this world, in this world, but not of this world. I am different. The way you talk when you walk into a room should tell people, I am a follower of Jesus Christ. We don't care to be normal by man's standards. I don't care what you say is normal. I'm going to redefine normal for myself. And normal means living a laid down life. He said, if I would lose my life for him, I would save it. There's no choice that I could make that is better than what God would make for me. You can take that one home. We're not going to take an extra offering just for that one line. I'm just going to let you know. (laughs) There's no choice that I could make in all of my life. 
that is better than what God has for me. Do you believe that in your life? And that's normal to live a laid down life for God. If normal means lowering my morals to fit in, I'll be abnormal. If normal means to live outside the parameters of scripture, I'll be abnormal. If normal comes with the high price of low living, I'd rather not do it and I'd rather be normal according to Jesus Christ. If normal means shutting off my Christian light so I don't offend all the super sensitive people in today's society. If normal means I can't say Christmas, well I'm good. I don't want to be normal. If normal says that I have to take God out of my pledge of allegiance, I don't want to be normal. If normal says that I have to accept abortion, I don't want to be normal. If normal says I have to accept all the homosexual agenda, I don't want to be normal. I want to live by what the word of God says. I want to make choices after God's heart. And some of you just got offended at what I said. And I would challenge you, you are not normal according to scripture. Because what God said, when God spoke, it became law. God, I don't think we understand that we're headed to his house after this. And I want to live a life that lets me in. A laid down life. Come on, stand with me.